Good night, good night, good night, folks. And like I said in my um, ad, we are here tonight with what I would consider to be a rare treat. We are looking at the guy who is behind the scenes and so, so, so much more. Tonight we have with us our creative director, Anderson Mitchell. Welcome, Anderson. How are you going, Joe? I cool, I cool. Normally, um, you're behind the scenes. Nobody could see you. <laughs> it feels very odd um, doing graphics and such for myself. It's, <laughs> but thanks for having me as a guest. Um, and uh, yeah, let's let's talk about some stuff. Well, I think it's important to have you as a guest because a lot of people don't know that the the whole of Team Hybrid are people who are involved in fitness on some level or another. You know, some of us are trainers, while some of us just love, you know, working out and getting fit. So let's take a look at how you factor into that, right? So let's take a look at your resume. Now. <laughs> Capoeira, dance, you know, general weightlifting, gymnastics, and of course, graphic development. Out of all... That's quite, quite, quite a resume. But out of all of them, which came first, actually? Which came first, boy? Hmm. <laughs> I think I was a, a graphic designer before everything else. I think that um, the creativity started to show from a very young age. Yes, right. I did have a lot of energy and I was doing a lot of stuff, but the design elements was there in me um, from day one. Um, mm -hmm. I could actually, I think one of my earliest memories was um, I think um, in kindergarten because I mean, I was now starting to get accustomed to my creativity and I would always be drawing and doodling on stuff. People took notice. And mm -hmm. I remember um, sometimes my teachers when they would uh, try to draw diagrams or stuff that have pertained to the lesson um, they weren't able to do so, and they would actually ask me to come to the, 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 the blackboard and draw whatever they were trying to illustrate. So I yeah. think I, I was very first and foremost a creative person. Excellent, excellent. And then, of course, you got into, is it gymnastics? Um, I would say then I got into a lot of horseplay. <laughs> I got into a lot of wild... <laughs> games i had a lot of energy let's just say when i was younger i was um very feisty nice. so what um i think that that my mom who was a very intelligent woman she tried to find avenues for me to focus that energy and uh, that's where these things started to come from when i started mm -hmm. secondary school um, I started doing gymnastics. I was also a swimmer. I was actually captain of a, a college swim team. I did not and, even know that. Yeah, I was actually captain of the swim team. And I used to take part in other activities as well. Nice, nice. So let's talk about how I know you. For those who don't know, Anderson and I both do capoeira. We are from different schools, but we've crossed paths interestingly enough as friends multiple times in what we call a horda which is where capoeiras get together to practice our martial art right so let's talk about that capoeira history now how did you start in it when did it come to you that is a funny story um uh let me shout out um Rianne vialva Right, she's a friend of mine from from South, a good good friend um, from Deep South. Actually, I think she's from Labri or something like that. Um, I remember one day she was pointing out to me, "Look, there's this class in Tranquility College that teaches capoeira. Come, let's let's go and try it out." And she she we both attended the class together, and she was all competitive and <laughs> what she's like i'm gonna get good at this i'm gonna be doing flips you're gonna see me and so, i don't know how but funnily enough i ended up being the one staying in the class and right. going straight through to the end um i think um rayanne actually ended up migrating um but that was my first little taste of um 
capoeira. I mean, I did other martial arts before. Mm-hmm. I do a, a little something with Purple Dragon. And, right, right. Uh, a little karate. <laughs> but I was never serious about um, about any form of combat sport, to be honest. Until capoeira. Until capoeira. <laughs> Sometimes these things just call to you, eh? so it's true. what can I say? So um, how long ago was that? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Hold on, eh? Um, I would have just graduated. I would have just got my degree. So I would say it would have been early 2000s. I would say maybe 2004, maybe 2005. <laughs> then you and I started around the same time then. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a while. I mean, right now, um, it's been a while. Cordo Azul, so. That is not something that happens overnight. Yeah. And that actually, is a lot of time. And that would also mean you and I are the same rank. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> funny how it started. What is what I find most funny is that there were people who compared us because two red men <laughs> are on the same rank, are on the same experience with long ass <laughs> doing this thing. All right. Well, you you have that now. I well, yeah, I have, I have something. I have something, you know. Oh, you, no, you are that guy. <laughs> no, I am that guy. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your training also in terms of not capoeira, but other things that you think would have helped you with capoeira, other, st- other training methods, other martial arts, the gymnastics, the weights, whatever. How you think those played into your capoeira? All right, well... um. I think that um, capoeira is probably one of the one of the few sports that probably require all the principles of fitness. Um, you need to be strong. You need to be flexible. You need to be agile. You need to be it, balance, little... power, speed, flexibility. Yeah, yeah. Muscular endurance, cardiovascular endurance. Correct. You have to have almost coordination. Water. Yeah, don't worry. There are 10 components of fitness. Well, Balance. 10 trainable components of fitness. And I agree, you need all 10. You need all to be a good cap worster. Yeah. Um, so I I took my training. I I had a, a bunch of different things I was doing during the week. I was doing cap wear every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday um, with uh, Senzala, mm-hmm. right? Big up my professor, Luko, Leon Carmichael. Um, good night, Leon. Good night. <laughs> if he's there. <laughs> um, and I would run on... Uh, which days I used to run on? I used to run on, on two or three of those days. So I would run on the Monday. I think I would run on the Monday, the Friday, and the Saturday. And the for almost all the days, I think four times a week, I would go to the gym to do some resistance. Right. Um, I used to run from my home. I was living in St. James at the time. I used to run from the home to the savannah, around the savannah, and come back home, which was exactly five miles. And I was able to do it in about 45 minutes, so nine minutes per mile. Um, uh, On my gym days, I kind of tried to break it up into different muscle groups. I did not have a, a personal trainer or anything like that. Everything that I learned, I Googled. And I guess because I had a certain amount of body awareness because of gymnastics and mm-hmm. other sports that I did, it wasn't difficult for me to look at a video and see the correct way to do certain exercises and whatnot. So what I what I did was I just kind of Googled all the stuff that I needed to do. I would compose uh, a group of exercises, about five exercises. I would go get them done, come back, and that's it. Call it quits, <laughs> right? Go and do, take a protein shake and try and get a good night's sleep, and it worked. I that's that gave me the f- physique that's in the picture <laughs> right now. Um, so yeah. Oh, you're you're muted. Sorry. What we're going to do is we're going to take a very short break now. 
And we're going to take a look at you actually, not just in capoeira, but teaching capoeira. All right? Well, I wouldn't say teaching. I would say more guiding. All right. Um, for those who don't know what capoeira actually is, capoeira is an African-Brazilian martial art. It was developed through the slavery period in um, Brazil and was created by enslaved Africans based on martial arts and different other cultural aspects that they brought from capoeira. In fact, there's a, there are a couple of styles of martial arts that are very, very, very similar to capoeira that exist in Africa today. And those are thought to be the actual origins of the martial aspect of capoeira. But there's also some dance, there's music, there's philosophy, there's um, acrobatics and all of that stuff, right? So what you're seeing there is Anderson actually going through what we call a jogo or a game with another student who is his junior. And he's slowing it down to give her a chance to react to his movement. So even though this is the thing about capoeira capoeira is about a lot of interaction and a lot of dialogue in the order so even though you're not seeing anderson pointing and talking and stuff by slowing down his movements and allowing her to react he's actually allowing to um her to learn and he's actually guiding her through the movements that way all right so that was actually very interesting. You want let, let's chat a little bit about that video, Andy. All right. Well, I, I could not describe it any better, right? <laughs> Cap, uh, Capoeira is a, a dialogue. You know, it's it's. I like to describe it as life, mm. right? And when life throws a kick, you duck. You know, so you you give. You give your, your your students or your colleagues um, cues, well, not cues, but but you, you give them the, a chance to, to 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 practice these movements to escape or to move away. You know, capoeira doesn't really have um, that many blocking, that much blocking in block involved. It's all about kind of reacting and responding to what um, comes towards you, and I, I think that that's probably what makes it a, a effective form of martial arts you know mm -hmm. <laughs> kicks in general i don't um i don't um subscribe to blocking them <laughs> you know you have to escape you have to yeah i mean uh, when somebody 200 and 200 plus pounds is throwing a foot at you full speed there's not much blocking you can actually do anyway you know <laughs> Even yeah. if you get that hand up or whatever, it's going. It's still going to hurt quite a bit. So, you know, in terms of the philosophy of capoeira, where you try to get out of the way instead of absorbing that blow, I I think I'm a little bit um, like you. I think I lean a little bit more towards that. You know. Yeah. That's, so. that, that's the style. That's that's what this the style is about, and. I, that's why I think um, you know is 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 a nice um, style to learn when it comes to to responsiveness, agility, evasion, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's effective in that aspect. Right. So we're going to move on to the next part, the next set of um, 
how else what else i actually know about you you're a dancer i would say a dancer extraordinaire <laughs> right um we actually have a little clip of you dancing on stage in i don't know if it's, is it a show or a competition i think it was a show I can't, I can't. <laughs> all right let's take a quick look at that Yes, Anderson. Hmm. All I can say is, yes, Anderson. <laughs> Again, this is why I say, you know, dance extraordinaire, you know, your talent is clearly, clearly there, you know. Um, how did you start? Well, we know how you started in Capoeira. How did you start in dance? Uh, how did I start in? In dance, uh, I'd actually start because of a girlfriend, uh, ex-girlfriend. Um, yeah, it, it was actually my first. Oh, this story of so many of us. <laughs> yeah, it was actually my first girlfriend, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, what happened was um, she actually studied in Mexico, and uh, she learned um, basic. Well, I don't say basic, but she learned um, Cuban salsa over mm -hmm. there and she was very much into it and when we met and we started dating i mean she's like oh she's the reina de salsa right and i'm like all right cool so if we go somewhere and they start to play a little latin she would find somebody and she would start dancing with them so i know stupidity right <laughs> i was like okay so here yeah, what's going on if i go down and stay with this girl that means i'm gonna have to learn how to dance i'm gonna have to learn some of the latin dances so that I could at least keep up. So what ended up happening is we ended up going to a class together. I told her, hey, what? I want to learn this thing. Let me go to our class. Um, we went to Eugene Joseph in San Fernando. And I started to catch on quick because, I mean, I'm already I'm a martial artist. I used to do mm -hmm. gymnastics. I already basically know how to dance. I just have to right. learn this type of dance. Right. You know, so I, catch, I, I caught on really quickly. And um, I think what ended, what ended up happening is that I kept learning and kept getting better, and now I'm better than she is. So, <laughs> um, yeah, like even now when we when I see her in parties and stuff, I'm like, and we meet up, and she's like, "Oh my God, you got so good!" Like, like you know, she's like intimidated now. So I just kept learning. Um, I, I kept um, doing stuff with. Uh, international dancers and i think that it just grew from there i just started getting better mm -hmm. and then um people started to ask me to do classes um workshops performances etc so it, it just kind of grew our community is very small um i've actually went abroad a couple times and uh I did some dancing there as well. <laughs> you know, I've had a, a number of a really good partners who taught me some good stuff. 
And I think that it just it just kept growing. I mean, I haven't stopped dancing to this day. I think that dancing keeps people young, mm -hmm. <laughs> it keeps you young, and it keeps you uh, energetic and whatnot. And even though it's one of the few things that I could do now comfortably, um, because it's like yeah. second nature, right? Like capoeira requires effort, right? I mean, compared to dancing, like capoeira yeah. is hard. Right, no doubt. Yeah. You're upside down, you're spinning on one hand. These things don't do. That's not natural, right? But dancing just feels very natural, especially when you're dancing with somebody who also could dance. Right. It's, yeah, and it's fun. It's 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 fun. Capoeira is fun too, but um, it's it's something that you could just do anywhere now. Like capoeira only happens in class. <laughs> you can't really do capoeira outside of class. So yes, to to you dancing is good for both your physical and mental health yes uh definitely would say that um it keeps your your brain active especially as a man because um partner dancing for men is a little bit more difficult in the sense that we actually have to choreograph the dance lead it and look good doing it Right, women have it a little bit. I mean, everything should, should be comfortable for the lady. Our job is also to make the lady extremely comfortable, right? But, um, we have the job of um, composing the dance, communicating it to the lady effectively, mm -hmm. um, and making sure that we also look good because I mean, you, you, you can't. I mean, you can't let the lady get all the the flams. You had to show off your little <laughs> stuff as well. You had to, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you had to put your little oil in it. Um, yeah, so it's it's a little bit more challenging. The mind keeps you, yeah, yeah. You always have to be learning combinations, patterns, mm -hmm. um, and then recognizing patterns so you can rearrange them. And then also now you have to put these patterns to the music. Right, there's something called musicality in dance. Right. And I think I, I don't know how that fits into fitness, right? But I think it has a lot to do with coordination because you don't want to dance oh, yeah. a pattern, like a pattern might have eight counts, and you you might try and dance that eight counts on any, but the the music might have a little accent on the four and a half beat, <laughs> you know? So you have to be able to rearrange your pattern now to suit that little accent or if it, it the, the the pattern ends on a, on on the six beats and there's a dip you have to be able to listen and hear those things in the music so that when that part of the song comes you could give the lady a dip and mm -hmm. trust me it's it's effective she notices she will notice <laughs> well as for what you said how it factors into fitness that's coordination of course you are correctly identify that but it's also balance and agility because i mean at any moment you can move you can go to do a spin and of course during that moment you're your um you you have to engage your core and, and stay balanced as well as agility because, correct because you know it you know you know it better than me because i am not a dancer at all don't worry one day i promise i'll learn <laughs> but i am not a dancer at all so you know it better than me change of direction agility boom three of your com of, of the 10 components of fitness hit right there um if if you've ever done any sort of martial arts trust me dancing is extremely easy it, it doesn't even need to be capoeira it could be boxing it could be taekwondo um, all those things require a similar amount of reaction time. I think reaction time is also something that um, should be explored uh, comparatively um, oh, yeah. between dancers and um, dancers and, and fighters because um, seeing openings to strike um, is kind of the same thing as hearing openings in. The, music yeah to do particular moves so i would actually say, time. i would actually like to compare that with female dancers because i had one dance lesson from my cousin when i was 
still in my 20s, I think. I won't say how long ago that was. <laughs> but, <Last week. laughs> yeah, exactly. Last week, last week. Yeah. But um, she demonstrated to me how a guy would signal to a girl to, that there's a change. And it's just this light touch in the hip or whatever, on the waist or whatever, just to change direction. And she has to react to that absolutely instantly. So I would like, as you said, the comparison, I would like to see the comparison between female dancers and a fighter for reaction yeah. time. Right. That, that might be a good, um, that might be a dis good discussion to have with um, uh, Tiana. <laughs> very true, very true. For those who don't um, know, Tiana is one of the models in our magazine, and she is also a national boxer ranked. I just found out she's apparently ranked number 33 in the world in her group, in her, I guess, weight group and everything. Um, and she told me the other day she wants to learn to dance, so <laughs> we'll see. You know, she might end up yeah. becoming a uh, uh, bachata champion. Um, I was actually re, uh, referencing, I was telling her that um, one of the greatest fighters in the world is actually a former cha-cha champion. Right. Bruce Lee. People also don't know that Muhammad Ali did dance and was yes. um, a dancer too. So Muhammad between Ali, yes. two, two of the greatest fighters in the world Correct. Were big dancers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, Bruce Lee was a cha-cha champion. He, he was amazing on the dance floor yeah. um yeah and you're right muhammad ali muhammad ali was i mean where where would you get that kind of footwork from correct so good dancing and fighting they go really well they hand, go hand in hand. hand a lot of people <laughs> say that martial arts are in an, in and of themselves dances but yeah not in the conventional way that you may think of so you could be a lover and a fighter at the same time <laughs> you want to know something funny andy talk to me all the conversation we just had was literally my next two questions. How are dance and capoeira related and how do they sharpen each other? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, and they make each other better, right? Yeah. Um, and that's, that's why, I mean, capoeira is a number of different things. It is a dance, it is a fight. fight. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they just work together. They just work together really well. And then also adding that, um element of music um mm -hmm. that whereas one of the few forms of martial arts that incorporates music on that level um where you actually have to learn to play instruments you actually have to learn to sing you actually have to learn those things and understand music understand chord progressions understand um beat values stuff like mm -hmm. that um it's yeah it it it, it just works it just works, and I, I think that everybody at some point in time should try um should try capoeira. I completely agree. Let's take another look at you dancing now. We have on uh, a, a display you did on I don't even remember the channel with this guy Fazir Mohammed. <laughs> yeah, let's take a little look at what you were doing on national TV. This is that ice cold Michelle fight for that white gold. This one for them hood girls, them good girls, straight masterpieces. Styling, violent, living it up in the city. Got Chuck's on with Saint Laurent. Gotta kiss myself. I'm so pretty. I'm too hot. Got the police and the firemen. I'm too hot. Make a dragon want to retire, man. I'm too hot. Say my name, you know who I am. I'm too hot. I'm a bad guy. So once again, not only are you dancing, you're dancing on national TV for the, well, for the country and hopefully at some point the world to see, showing your skills off. <laughs> let's, right. take, let's take a little look at 
I guess, your non-fitness related work and how it actually um, got, how it actually does relate to fitness, right? So you're also a graphic designer. You said this was your first thing. The first thing you got into was graphic design. Um, you were just always doing creative and st um, stuff. So, Mark, allow me to comment on that video first, right? Let Let's talk about it. Right. That that video is actually a promotional um, thing that we did on the morning show um, for Salsa Fiesta, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, my dance teacher at the time was a committee member. And um, she, uh, we organized to, to get on the show to let people know about it's basically the, I would say it's probably the biggest Latin dance festival in the English speaking Caribbean. Right. right. And it's right here in Trinidad. Some of the biggest names in Latin dance actually come. Right. And we we're just doing a little, um, that, that style of dance is actually called Latin hustle. Okay. Right? So it's, it, it can be done to normal everyday pop music kind of thing that has a four, four time signature. Um, okay. and that lady that I was dancing with is actually my dance teacher. Right. And I want to shout her out. Right. Mm. Because she is a very amazing lady she is a very good teacher a very good dance teacher if you have one to learn the dance i would say go and check carry um latin passion right that's the name of her school mm -hmm. and she and and look at how bright like i sure you can't even guess how old carol is in that video well, i'll just say that i'm gonna assume she was in her 40s or 50s <laughs> nah, she is older. I don't know how old she is, but I know she are wrong longer than that. And she <laughs> remarkable for her age. Yeah, she does. She Definitely so, she does. She is full of life. Um, and I think that th that's one of the benefits of dance. Um, that you know, you you just remain looking young and you just have a very amazing and broad outlook on life. And when you are around, you give people a very cherry um you know, a cherry outlook, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. So I just want to shout her out and I want to shout out Salsa Fiesta because I've learned a lot from Salsa Fiesta because they've bought dancers from England, Ukraine, so Brazil, from the United States, New York, uh, California, nice. Mexico, Canada, all over the place. We've had tons of I've, I've been able to learn um kizomba from dancers from from angola and england i've been able to learn um salsa from dancers from puerto rico and new york that is that is is no better way to really learn how to do the thing than from the source right as you would know same thing with capoeira yeah definitely. You, right it's always a good vibe to have your professors and your um your your mystery come from uh whatever from wherever. brazil or venezuela or wherever they came from you get to learn some of the language you get to learn some portuguese and you learn a lot quicker you're more excited about it and they have a lot more to share right so that's that's fantastic and shout out to carol shout out to carol i hope you are watching and if not i hope you will watch it at a later <laughs> date <laughs> but you've done an excellent job with anderson he is very very good you know all right so let's move on to the graphic thing now okay <laughs> i know graphics isn't exactly fitness but you know it, it's it ties in for those who haven't figured it out as yet. It ties in. So tell us a little bit about your experience and the development of your company, New Artillery. All right. So how much six? I, I think I have about 15 years professional experience mm -hmm. as a graphic designer. Um, when I graduated, after I got my degree, I was employed immediately at McCann Erickson. Um, I was then poached <laughs> by um, Publicist Caribbean, and right. then I was poached again <laughs> by CMB. Um, and then after that, I went to Toucan, 
where we're starting to do more digital stuff. I mean, this mm-hmm. is this is some years ago. This is when you know print was one of the number one forms of um, communication and media. Um, right. And uh, after Tucan, I think that I settled down. That was when I uh, was diagnosed with um, chronic kidney disease. So I realized that um, that fast pace, um, that fast pace environment in the advertising world was not going to be good for me. So I said, you know what, I'm going to have to start doing my own stuff. All right. And I started the company New New Artillery. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, New Artillery was born in, I think, 2016. And we still around, <laughs> you know, like, um, I think that that's a big deal. Um, yeah, think, that, it's a huge deal. Yeah. If you were able to survive the beginning years of a startup and a pandemic, um, because when things started to get good for my company, the pandemic hit like a year later. So it's for almost an entire year i suffered a serious financial loss but i think that uh, in that pain came motivation to make sure and, and and to try and do more and that was why i was inspired to rejuvenate hybrid caribbean and um mm-hmm. launch it with the hybrid body issue which is um which we're going to talk about soon i'm very sure um, <laughs> extremely yeah. soon yeah so it's 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 been it, uh, being a graphic designer has its up, ups and downs i've reached a, a a place where like i'm not compelled to uh run down to hustle anymore like uh, mm-hmm. people actually now pursue me for work and i'm quite cool with that and that is when you feel you can feel like you've truly achieved something as a professional um when your work is desired and that is a good feeling i'm sure you feel that too as a personal trainer oh yeah Um, yeah so it's uh let's just say this year it started i won't say this year i would say around march last year it started to get better and i was starting to come out of that the the rut of this um this whole pandemic yeah so, um i think that um you've been able to do a great job in terms of how to um how you were able to not just maintain your art- new artillery but make it thrive because the kind of stuff you're doing and this one i Sometimes I'm begging you for work for hybrid and you're busy with the clients. <laughs> and I actually am not upset about that at all because at the end of the day, this is your business. And I know that you have, just like anybody who effectively runs a business, you have a sequence of how you do certain things and anything oh, yeah. I ask for, boom, I'm going to get it. I may not get it immediately, but I'm going to get it for sure. So I have to say kudos, congratulations. And now let's take a look at the... um tie-in sure um i wouldn't exactly say new artillery is thriving as a matter of fact it probably have some clients watching me live here on youtube right now and <laughs> probably like honestly you have a logo to do for me was was you here on <laughs> you here on youtube palancing talking all kind of thing so <laughs> um what we're we gonna look at body Have I ever been a victim of body shaming? I would say recently as I've gotten into fitness, especially in the Caribbean. Have I been a victim of body shaming? Yes, I have. Have I ever been a victim of body shaming? Definitely, yes. I have been a victim of body shaming. I have been a victim of body shaming, um, especially when I was pregnant. Do pregnant women face body shaming or other types of ignorance? 
Yes, I have been a victim of body shaming. I have been a victim of body shaming. Yeah, I've, I've been a victim of body shaming quite, um, quite often. Interesting thing about body shaming is it doesn't take any one form. I have been a victim of body shaming uh, throughout my life, really. Have I ever been a victim of body shaming? Yes. So folks, the video you just saw, for those who don't know, is an, uh, an ad for our body issue, which Anderson just spoke about, the hybrid body. Um, so hybrid, for those who don't know, is actually the Caribbean's first fitness and wellness magazine some years ago. Now, I won't say how long right now, but some years ago, they got an idea, our um, founder, Got an idea. 25, 2014. I actually did my shoot. As you saw, I was in there in 2015, I believe. The founder decided, yay, hey, so we need to do this thing. We need to, to take a stand against body shaming. So let's go ahead and do this magazine. And Anderson, our creative director. Now, I, I keep saying our, but I wasn't a part of hybrid as yet. I just got asked to model said let's go ahead and do this thing he got together with um kivan from malau the owner of malau Me media to put together this to do the photo shoots anderson did all the video editing that you saw just now anderson did all the artwork the the logo design the layout i'll take a quick flip through here you know the layout the everything and yes that is Tamo williams you know he helped with posing the athletes um he did all of it with his creative eye and it all started actually with his um involvement in again hybrid caribbean the caribbean's first fitness and wellness magazine so this is where the graphics ties into the fitness so Anderson, let's let's talk a little bit about your start in um hybrid all right so that is actually a funny story um franz mm -hmm. franz jelizo right just shout him out one time he's a genius that came up with the idea mm -hmm. i believe look the, the story starts with him so i'm going to give his side of the story so he's sitting <laughs> down on his porch and he opens us a magazine. Let me not say what type of what his name is. <laughs> right? He opens a magazine and there's fitness advice in it. And he puts up his feet and he starts reading. And without use of profanity, <laughs> he wants to know what the F is this. Right? It was extremely bad fitness advice. And yeah. when he showed it to me, even I and I I wasn't. I'm not a personal trainer or anything like that, but I know that these things are scientifically not, you know, justifiable. Um, so he calls me up and he says, Andy, um, you are, you're a graphic designer, right? I said, yeah. Well, I know you're just doing a little fitness stuff and thing here and there. Um, I want to work on a project with you. I say, what is that? <laughs> he said, I want to do a fitness magazine. I think the country kind of needs it. And we're in a place right now where people are giving out bad information, not <laughs> questionable, just bad information that could possibly even hurt or um, injure people. And um, I think that we need to do something about that. And he also brought up several other points that like, and, and I mean, I also knew these things as well, that um, in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a lot of lifestyle diseases that that could kill you very easily that could be fixed very easily by nutrition exercise taking a little run taking a little walk um stop eating certain things i'm gonna not say what to stop eating. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah so um yeah so with, with that in mind um yeah i told him yes we're supposed to be ranking second in the world in diabetes um things like um 
artery disease, heart disease, all those things. You could fix all those things just by eating well and getting some exercise. So I said, yeah, this sounds like a good project. Let's, let's start it. And um, we got a couple other people on board, um, Gabby, um, Gabby Gonzalez, uh, what, was, what was his name? Um, what it was just Robert DeGans. Robert DeGans was very instrumental in getting hybrid off the ground. Mika Ella Tang, she, they were part of our original team um, when we started to move forward. Um, that being said, things progressed. We produced four amazing episodes, um, four amazing issues, I should say. Um, we had we met a lot of really good people, a lot of good um, was that five? athletes. There was a fifth episode, but it was never published because we could not get the advertising. Okay. Right? I think um, at that time, the whole idea of print was starting to wear thin. Because um, mm -hmm. we knew that it had a time limit. We just weren't sure. And um, that was when we decided, you know what, we need to take this thing online. So the fifth episode ended up um, being published online. Um, and then after that, uh, Things started to get a little bad. Um, Franz, um, I believe that he was trying to have a family, and uh, I think uh, he got pregnant. And um, that was when I was also diagnosed. So there were there was basically nobody left to kind of carry on the labor of love for a little while. But we're back now, <clears throat> and hopefully we're here to stay. Um, we're hoping to get support from all of you guys. Um, the launch of hybrid, the or the relaunch of hybrid occurred, I would say around November, and I think that we're just seeing the numbers just going up, and I think that that is good to know, that is exciting to know, um, and the people are excited about the body issue. Um, the body oh, yeah. issue is really a good idea. Um, just to say a few things about the body issue. The, the, we live in a country where um, a, a, you get fat is a tr normal greeting. You know, we see people and it's like, oh, how you get so small. You, you can never be perfect, right? Like, you would either be too skinny or too fat. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that one of the real, the true inspirations behind the uh, magazine is actually Fiona Branca. Um, mm -hmm. When she tells me her stories, I am um, like totally dumbfounded. Like, what is up with that? Like, I'm just like, how how is it possible that these people could be judging you for how you want to look? Um, and it's not even by accident. Like, like, like she is actually doing this for her health and and for her desire. She likes the way she looks, and and we all do too. You know. <clears throat> It's it's just a it's it's our is is traditional for us. We kind of if our, if somebody is tall and skinny, we call them tall man. If somebody is Asian, we call them Chinese boy. We always judging people, mm -hmm. you know. And the thing about it is that when we see skin or nudity, we cannot perceive it in any other way except sexual. Yeah. Right. It can't be for the purpose of performance with swimmers or gymnasts or, you know, it's, it's always um, related to sex. And we need to desensitize that for like people like pregnant women and athletes and people need to be able to see the naked body and not uh, associate it with something vulgar. Correct. 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 That was always been my stance um i'm gonna say a little bit of my history in terms of this i think this may have been my first um foray into nude art other than that there's actually a figure drawing session that anderson himself started but i didn't get involved until probably 2018 or something where you pose nude people draw you and i've been to a about four of those, you know, and I'm actually looking forward to start starting back because the kind of artwork that comes out of these sessions is actually pretty incredible. Imagine somebody drawing your entire body 
in 30 seconds and i mean it may not be very detailed but they get shapes they get you know in 30 seconds in two minutes and then you take the same person and say listen you now have 30 minutes to draw this person the kind of art that comes out of it is absolutely beautiful and whether you're nude or not actually doesn't matter but the thing about being nude is it gives the person a lot more to work with in terms of you know every fold every ripple you know every blemish every imperfection is now on display for this person to put onto paper and it's actually beautiful you know and it's not sexual at all <laughs> and totally that's the important agree. thing well the, the the body is a work of art and i the think that we need to start looking at it that way correct 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 right it's not a thing it's not a it's not just an object <laughs> It's it's a it's a beautiful thing. Body correct, is a beautiful correct, thing. Correct. Who, who said that? Body is a beautiful thing. One of our one of our athletes said that. I can't remember who. I might have. I can't remember. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know it's something I, I say a lot, you know, but I don't know if I said it in the interview. <laughs> See. Um so we were talking about also and you're saying you got diagnosed you got diagnosed you mentioned the name earlier but can you say it one more time the name of the condition that you're battling with chronic kidney disease caused by fsgs um FSGS. it's something that you just kind of need to google um but i'm gonna try and explain it as best as i could um fsgs stands for focal segmental glomerular sclerosis so it's basically the scarring of the tissue on the kidneys. Um, the unfortunate thing about kidneys is kidneys don't heal. They don't, um, they can't replenish their, their cells. Um, so the only way out of something like this is a transplant. Mm -hmm. um, there are, I uh, would also point out, that's what chronic kidney disease basically means. It means that your kidney function has dropped below um a certain amount to be able to properly function and it could be deadly if you don't get stuff like dialysis dialysis is basically what you would use to clean your blood in the absence of your kidneys being able to do so right. um that being said i want to encourage all our viewers if you do have the time and if you are extremely healthy because you watch hybrid tv very regularly and you read the magazine and you know how to uh, do your workouts how to plan your workouts and how to plan your meals etc and you're an extremely healthy person um i want you to think about possibly becoming a donor if not a live donor you can become a deceased donor which means that god forbid something should happen to you um on your deathbed, we don't need to ask questions and your organs could be used to save somebody else's lives. Um, where kidneys are concerned in Trinidad, they probably do about three kidney transplants a year. And this was before the pandemic. Um, now during the pandemic, I believe that probably one has been done. So we literally have hundreds of people sitting down on dialysis, very young people, people younger than myself, um, 16 years that have chronic kidney disease and let's just say that there are ways that we could possibly save their lives um, so that's what I'm saying let's all hey that's my nurse that's my my dialysis <laughs> nurse nurse Suzanne <laughs> nice. right we could possibly save their lives right so what I'm trying to get people to do is go to um, transplant and just signed up. Um, normally in other countries, when you go to get your driver's license, they will ask you, do you wanna be an organ donor? And you would just tick a box. We don't have that. You actually have to go into the hospital and tell them here what I would like my organs to be used for this particular purpose. If I die or if I'm on, you know, um, in a position where I can't live or I can't live properly, um so it it's it's unfortunate i don't think that the system should be like that i think by default um 
this these questions should be asked early and i think a wrong driver's license time is a good time to have those things done but all in all um i think that it's a, a good idea if you are a fit healthy person um you should try and 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 encourage your friends to come out and register to become an organ donor i was actually talking to a nephrologist in texas i actually just returned from texas not too long ago um and the doctor actually told me that um kidney donors tend to have a longer life uh than a lot of other people and it's not because they've donated their kidney it's because you have to be of a certain um health standard right you have to be of a certain level of health and fitness to be able to donate in the first place and it goes to show that if you have two and you share one it does not actually curtail your total life expectancy you actually still are able to live a long fruitful life your other kidney will compensate for the one that you just gave away and that person now will also be able to live too so if you have it in you i mean it's, it's a very difficult decision to make of course other things need to line up right but at least sign up or register to become a deceased donor we need more deceased donors um and if you feel that you could become a live donor too if you have some a good friend who suffered from kidney failure and you want to help them out um then do that do the right thing yeah so what i want to do right now is actually take a is actually show quickly right so this is just so that people could understand how important your kidneys actually are to functioning the general functioning to your life in general so yes we do actually encourage those who can donate please do if you don't know go to do a go to a doctor and do a medical checkup find out if you are capable of donating and even if you don't want to go under the knife because you're afraid of you know whatever whatever you can become as anderson said a deceased donor so that even after you pass your organs can go on to save somebody else's life all right folks i want to just describe what um we showed in that picture um on the left it would have probably been me at peak performance um mm -hmm. this is me uh running two three times a day gym four times two three times a week sorry um gym four times a week capoeira a couple times um and uh, this this is me at 210 pounds um after this is this the picture on the right is actually let me show the picture again the picture on the right is actually me exactly one year ago after my most recent surgery right and i had to be put on uh, uh hemodialysis but i mean even from what is happening there one year later I think that uh, thanks to healthy eating, a little bit of exercise, a little bit of, I was still able to recover from that. I, I was at that time, how much? 160 pounds, right? That means that I lost probably about 60, 50 or 60 pounds, yeah. Um, right, and I've been able to put back a few of those. Um, so, even with, you know, kidney failure, you know, following a particular diet, a strict diet. Um, and of course, your diet is a little bit more complicated now because 
you have renal failure. Um, that being said, everything still, you could still survive. You could still come together. You could still recover. You could still regain some strength. Um, and uh, I, I hope that I could motivate people who suffer with um, chronic kidney disease to be able to come out and still be energetic, go dancing, probably even still do a little capoeira here and there. Um, right? But I mean, I probably will never, would not look like what I did before again until I get a transplant. But all in all, you could still live. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the fact that you're able to still go dancing and all of that stuff, even if it's a little bit, you know, is yeah. remarkable. And we're very happy that you're able to do some stuff. And we do hope that we do find, uh, I don't know, I, I guess you can say a donor for you. Because uh, we, even though there may be a list, you can also have a direct donor. Somebody say, I want my kidney to go to this person, right? Well, I'm actually right now currently donating some of my time and my talent in terms in terms of graphic design and communication and marketing to a kidney foundation right now um mm -hmm. right it's actually from one of the dialysis centers that i used to operate in they actually recognized that um i had mm -hmm. um skills <laughs> that they could use to, to promote the um the foundation and they um i'm hoping that they they could do some really good things for the renal the whole renal department in 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 trinidad and tobago because right yeah. now it's it's just getting worse and worse there are more and more people who are suffering from kidney failure and my particular disease is something that is not lifestyle it's actually just genetic i just got it <laughs> you know and a lot of kidney failure is like that um that being said you know we I mean, they, they, there's a lot of hope in the technology. I'm seeing uh, mechanical kidneys. I'm seeing them. They take a kidney out of a pig and put it in a human and it work and all kinds mm -hmm. of um, Those things could happen, but I think that it might be a little while before it really actually happens. So right. until then, we have to find kidneys for these people. And um, yeah, I think that it's let's let's think about it mm -hmm. i agree before we move on we're gonna have one last comment from linda mendez <laughs> that's one of my dance students man <laughs> nice a, nice nice amazing dancer she, i hope that i, I can dance with her again soon <laughs> come on we know you will hopefully <laughs> So from that now, we basically, I, th uh, I think we've covered everything. So now it's time to go on to, well, you know what, we are, what we're about to do. <laughs> the last rep. I don't need to give any preamble because you've been there every, um, every episode. Every so, you, so you know exactly, yeah, for every rep, correct. Every so you know exactly what's coming. All right. Let's get right into it. So I'm going to separate this into two parts. Favorite junk food, but first, before your diagnosis and now. Because, of course, your diet would have changed and what you can and can't eat would have changed. It, it hasn't changed <laughs> because let's just say if I... If I ate only what I was supposed to, it wouldn't be junk food. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be junk food. So true that, true that. every now and then I treat myself with a little roti boy. Yeah. I really, I, I as a roti mouse. A I, can't mouse. Blame, I can't blame you for that. Roti is roti. At the end of the day, is roti. You know what I mean? And that is wheating, you know. Uh, like, that's what I love about roti. Like, I feel more connected to Trinidad and Tobago knowing that I cannot resist a scrumptious, nice chicken roti with the bone. Yeah. With the, don't give me no bonus. 
a lot of people, as you say, Trinidad and Tobago, a lot of people don't know this, but the roti that we have in Trinidad is unique to here because Correct. Um, yes, the, right. yeah, the roti that you'll find in India is more similar to, I think, what we call a dosti roti or mm. something like that. So the roti is different. The curry they have across there is different. So our roti, as much as it came with our... Um, Indian immigrant ancestors is actually unique to Trinidad and Tobago. So this is definitely a, a Trinbagonian dish that we are celebrating here. When when I fly out, people just ask me to bring roti skin, you know. People <laughs> <laughs> free some roti skin in the, in, the, in the fridge and bring that down. Bring some lion's bacon powder. We don't get that up yeah. here. Oh, nothing. Yeah. Definitely. Lions. They, 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 they want <laughs> lions curry, sorry. They say oh, they don't get that here. Right. So, now, of course, some of these will be pre-diagnosis, but I'm sure some of them you can still get into now. So, I will say whether they pre or post. Yeah. Squats or deadlifts? Squats. Squats. I have very strong legs. Genetic. You know, so I could show off with these right, right. my back not as strong as my legs so yeah. I, I Leg would do more deadlifts legs or chest legs or chest legs legs is helping more with martial arts as i always <laughs> say that is the right answer yeah even to throw, <laughs> even to throw a punch you need power oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> you know you um, can i'm actually doing a little bit of kickboxing fitness. I won't say kickboxing. I am not a kickboxer, but kickboxing fitness. And I kind of teach that to people even when they're doing their punches. If your leg's not right, if your legs aren't set, um, situated right and you don't drive through the legs, you're not going to get the punch right. No, no. I, I do do... Well, I wouldn't say I just do chest more. But just like the deadlifts, like because it's a weaker... Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's my weaker um, lift... I would do more of it, but I right. enjoy sport, sports more. Same thing with legs and chest. Um, right, right, right. I enjoy legs more, but I do more chest because it's my weaker um, muscle. Right. You know? So I would probably try and push a little harder. I'll probably do more reps or probably put it in twice a week. Right. But um, I prefer, <laughs> you know, yeah. even to throw a, a, a strong punch, you need strong legs. True. Very true. So... If you're feeling down and you need a pick me up, what's your go-to exercise? Capoeira every single time. It, and and you don't even need to do capoeira. You just need to be in the environment and sing yeah, and clap. And if you're feeling down, I could always count on my my my, bro, my brothers, my ancestors in capoeira. Mm -hmm. Yes, I could always Can't count on. Can't tell you how many headaches I cured just from getting into a hoarder. Oh yeah. And 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 it takes you out of some dark it, it brings you to the basic basics of life because when yep. they you know the philosophies I remember, you remember Cobra Mansa? Mm -hmm. Remember Cobra Mansa said how in this circle, in this hoarder, all that you bring in into the hoarder is positive. Everything else stays outside. So yeah. bring yourself and bring your positivity inside here and leave all your stress, all your bacchanal, your ex, your baby mother, all of them, <laughs> all of them to leave them thing out of the hole. So if you could train with or train under one person, who would that fantasy workout partner or trainer be? Wow. I think Latif Crowder, Andy Brock. I had to give you two, sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, Latif Crowder for Capoeira mm -hmm. and the Rock just for just being big and ridiculous. <laughs> rock would be one of would definitely be one of my um top ten list there. And plus the, the Rock is just a good vibes kind of guy. Yeah boy. He's for a real. Good vibes, yeah, yeah. Favorite workout music. Salsa boy, <laughs> you should have been able to guess that one. I was trying to say soccer, but it's really salsa. 
Uh, well, I don't worry. I, I love Soka enough for the, for just about everybody in this country, right? So <laughs> Soka is a good runner. Yeah. Um, cardio or weights? I cut. No post diagnosis weights. Before, I did both. I love both. <laughs> I love right, running. right, right. I love running and getting faster and cutting a little bit off my time every single time. I like running through the bush, in the mud. I enjoy doing hardcore and all those, uh, you know, yeah. all those races, those adventure races especially. But yeah, now, yeah, yeah. as uh, I have chronic kidney disease, you need your kidneys to produce red blood cells, which means that uh, in terms of cardio, I can't go for <laughs> right. go too far. Favorite sport to play, and I'm you can include dance if you want. Electronic games is a sport, <laughs> no, <laughs> I guess it go out of the dance way. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the next pick me up. Like, I, I could always be, I like to do a lot of things that make me smile, capoeira and dance, mm -hmm. always make you smile. So, so I'll go pre-diagnosis, protein supplements or diet? That, that, that is, for me, that is a hard one, but I, I, you need, when I was training, I needed these supplements. Right. I didn't prefer it. I preferred to, I would have preferred to eat as much as I could, at yeah. least as much meat. But to be honest with you, when I was packing on the weight, um, to have to put that extra, that third chicken breast in your mouth and eat it, I would have preferred to take a supplement. <laughs> right, right, right. And the last and biggest question, most important question, of course, TV or cinema? Um, I am a, let me just say, cinema with your crew, TV mm -hmm. with your girl. <laughs> and I have no girl right now, so I guess cinema. <laughs> Well, you know, you're the one always organizing the cinema lines, yeah? So yeah, I think cinema is really the correct answer. <laughs> cool, man. Cool. Well, Anderson, thanks for getting out from behind the curtain, for coming out in front of uh, in front of the world to have a little chat with me. Um, as much as I've known you for probably too long, <laughs> I definitely learned a few things here. And it was uh, an absolute pleasure talking with you on this platform. Same, same. And thank you so much for the information you've given us about the kidney disease. Um, once again, folks, I am going to say, please look into becoming a donor. If you already know that you can be, go sign up. Go to the hospital, the nearest hospital, and sign up. If not, Go to the nearest hospital and get a, a, a physical, get a, a, a regular medical checkup to find out if you can become a donor. All or, right. Or, or contact me. I have been in the hospital so many times. I know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. You can actually literally contact Anderson. Um, you want to give you want to give them a a, a, a a social media. In fact, you know what? Bleed out everything. Bleed out. Bleed Art at, you know, at Bleed Art on Instagram, Bleed Art on Facebook. You can actually contact us, all of us, at Hybrid. It's at Hybrid Caribbean on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, on um, YouTube, all of that, you know. So Bleed Art and Hybrid Caribbean, you can contact either Anderson directly at Bleed Art. You can contact all of us at Hybrid Caribbean. You can check out our website if you are interested in becoming a donor. And we'll have all the information there for you. Thanks to Anderson again. I know next week he'll be behind the scenes again. <laughs> and um, thanks to everyone who has tuned in, who has commented, who has shown Anderson support through this entire condition, this kidney condition. 
that that's oh. a lot of people <laughs> that's, that's a lot of people and that's, a, that's almost a whole community because i got support from my capoeira community i got support from the martial arts community in, in general i got support from the dance community and also the creative community mm -hmm. yeah so and we at hybrid want to thank everyone every single one of you for the support you've given Anderson, financial or otherwise, and we will continue to do what we can from our end as well, Andy. So thanks again to everyone who's tuned in next week. So we've spoken about dance from Anderson's side, which is Latin, ballroom, that kind of stuff. Next week, we're going to look at dance again, where our guest will be Maria Davis, a 26-year-old who teaches at her age and who has done multiple styles of dance and we're going to look at dance from a different angle with her next week remember to tune in of course you know i'll be sending out those um those broadcasts <laughs> for everyone who's interested and thanks again see you next week <laughs>